everybody, and welcome to another solo edition of the Earthborn Games Playcast. I'm Andrew Navarro. I'll be playing my ranger, Obo Bobo, the artificer forager, uh, taking over for Maxine and Fisher, who are playing as Barlow Finn and Junebug. And uh, let's see, they left us off at Crossroads Station. They got a lot done uh, yesterday, around day nine. Uh, and looking at the campaign tracker, uh, there was a bunch of stuff. So I put a bunch of rewards in my deck. I'm very excited. About 10 reward cards in here. And uh, it's a perfect day. So I'm hoping to also get a lot done today. And I, I think maybe they were planning on going to Branch. If that's the case, then they're in luck, because that's where I want to go today is Branch. I know we have a mission to go to the biological outpost. I'm not interested in doing that yet. We'll see. I I think my plan for today is to go from Crossroads Station, which is where we started here, to Branch, up to the High Basin, over to the Furrow, and then down to the Terravor, because I have heard there's something something in there that's worth getting. And actually I've never I've never been there on any of my playthroughs. So I'd like to do that. So that is my that is my plan for today. We have a bunch of missions in play. We have a Trail of Vines mission. So there's a mysterious Verdesian, a plant being out there uh, that we'd spend some time investigating and now it's kind of on the loose and we're trying to track it through the trail of vines it leaves behind. We have the invasion stage one, uh, which means the reclaimers are in the valley. So uh, it's just started out, though. So it's really gonna, only going to affect us when we go to ruin locations. Uh, and then we have the journey mission, as I as I said before. So without further ado, let's start. So we'll start by drawing cards i've already got the path deck and everything all set up i'm doing with the what i did last time with the with the challenge deck and the path deck sitting here in front of me so i don't have to reach all the way across the table every single time i draw so let's see i'll start by drawing my six cards and we'll see what i get gauze blade versatile day holler Camel Weave Cloak, Compassionate, and another Versatile. Eh. Well, there's definitely going to be some uh, mulliganing happening here. Let's see. Let's see. What's the test on the Crossroads Station? Okay. In that case. I think then I'm just going to mulligan... My versatiles, both of them. Back in you go. And I get green thumb and ranger badge. All right. I'll take that. I have to take that. Those are the rules. <laughs> Whether or not I'll take it, it's beside the point. Uh, Shuffle those versatiles back in. I'm sure they'll come up just when I need them. Take my starting hand, and we are going to be reading at the start of the day entry number 94.7. These all these entries sound like great, like classic rock radio stations. 94.7. Let's see, if we've completed Rescue Lun, we have. You hear a whistle from outside your tent and stumble out bleary-eyed to see Zek Saul in your campsite atop his still horse. Got something for you, he shouts and tosses you a leaf-wrapped package. It's from Lun. He said, thanks for saving his life. You open it to find packs of needle tea. Each ranger gains one energy in an aspect of their choice for the first round. Nice. That's handy. What do I get? Hmm. 
you know, I'm going to, let's see, what's this test again? Yeah, I'm going to take an extra focus energy for the first round. Because I could use it. All right, ready to go. Crossroad Station. Crossroad Station sits at the confluence of several trails and paths leading through the valley. Built upon a well-preserved Estian ruin, the station is the vision of the artificer Bale Orlin, son of the legendary artificer Mora Orlin. He designed the exterior to reflect the symmetry often found in Estian architecture while paying um, homage to the nautical engineers of the ancient past, whom the Orlins hold in high regard as pioneers in artificing. Cool. All right. Uh, rival setup is pretty easy. We're just going to draw one path card. Uh, we have the uh, old growth set. That's what we started with here today. So there's going to be a lot of old growth at the beginning of this game. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a puffer crawler. Uh, puffer crawlers, dangerous things. Uh, they're going to be uh, potentially glomming on, onto me or something else. We'll see. Uh, this Trail of Vines is also interesting. So the Trail of Vines mission, it has a couple effects on it. But what I'm trying to do is put vine tokens onto this, uh, onto this mission. And uh, whenever I clear a card that has vine tokens on it, uh, they're going to end up here. So when a flora comes into play, I get to place one vine token on it. Puffer crawler. Cruffy, cre <laughs> creepy as it is, is a flora. Vine token. Okay. All right, Crossroad Station has a test on it to describe who you're looking for to the villagers at the station to search the valley set for a human and shuffle them into the path deck. I'm going to try doing that. Um, assuming I just don't draw who I want immediately out of this deck. Um, but first I gotta deal with that pepper collar. It's a bear sloth. My goodness. Okay. A lot's happening here. So I, you know, I've been playing the, uh, playtesting the expansion a lot lately legacy of the ancestors uh maxine and fisher and i have been playing that and i'm also playing an artificer there though i'm playing the gregarious inventor it's a very different deck but i i feel like it, i've just emerged onto the surface of the valley after being underground for <laughs> several weeks <laughs> like oh what's all this i'm used to far different things in front of me uh okay so I have a bear sloth, I have a puffer crawler. Bear sloth isn't really much to worry about, uh, but that puffer crawler might be. Okay, so on a crest, it's gonna attach to my roll. And a sun, it's gonna attach to the bear sloth. I think I kind of want it to attach to the bear sloth. Definitely don't want it on me. That's that's for sure. Okay. Well, I have this day holler and I have a gauze blade. Both of them pretty effective against these guys. So, all right, but I think I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start by playing a Day Howler. Comes into play with one charge on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just pay an additional awareness 
exhaust my roll to put another token on my day holler. Then I'm going to discard it and exhaust the number of beings equal to the number of charges on the skier. So that's two. Exhaust the bear sloth. Exhaust the puffer crawler. I hit them with my ninja flashbang. And now, clear path. Clear path. I might just be able to get the heck out of here right away. <laughs> we shall see. All right. Let's start by describing who we're looking for. I'm going to go ahead. Hmm, the conundrum. I don't want this to fail, and this is my one chance. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a compassionate along with this focus energy. So I got three. So I'm guaranteeing success. I'll be very eloquent in my description. All right. It's tall. It's got a big hat. It's got a beard. Uh, I succeed. So I'm going to search the valley set for Ren Kobo. There he is. Why do I want to find Red Kobo, you ask? Well, I think I might want to trade with him. Uh, but also, I really want him for a sun effect. So I'm just going to bring him along if I can find him. And uh, he's going to help me out. All right. All right, so yeah. So I'm not going to get out of here just yet because I want to find Ren Kobo. All right, Suns, uh, move one vine token from a flora to another flora. There is no other flora, so that is that. I, if you know, I'm wishing now I, I put kept my puffer crawler spores in my deck. <laughs> I should have paid more attention to this mission. That's okay. That's okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead... And traverse the location for just for two. See if I get lucky. Oh, I just get through a plus one. So probably not going to draw the plus one, but we'll see. Hey, let's go. Plus one. So I've got three progress. That is enough to travel. Uh, let's see. Each ranger suffers fatigue equal to the number of fine tokens within reach. I have none. And that is that. Then I'm going to play my ranger badge. Let's me ready my roll. That should come in handy. And I think, well, it didn't end up using an extra focus like I thought it would, but that's okay. Uh, then I think I'm going to rest. Ready. Two clouds on a perfect day. It is raining all morning. Uh, it looks like it probably won't rain again, but if it rains, if it rains, I'm going to switch over to the downpour card just for the theme. All right. Draw a card. Ooh, got a sill sketchbook. 
That's exciting. And draw the top card of the path deck. Hanging Cherry Moss. There's a flora and a food. Okay. This is exciting. Check the recording. Functioning. All right. Uh, here we go. Well, I think I got to clear that cherry moss and get that vine, that vine token. That sounds pretty great. First, I'm going to play Sil Sketchbook. The dogs are worked up. Yeah, I think I just got it. I just got to keep that puffer crawler exhausted. It's it scares me. So I'll exhaust it with still sketchbook. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and I'll play a camel weave cloak and get geared up here. So I can avoid some fatigue. Hmm. Play a gauze blade. I'm really just kind of waiting to see if I can get Rancobo. And then I can just get the heck out of here. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to draw in my sketchbook. I'm going to sketch the bear sloth. I did it. Got two more sketches here. Get a mountain. This says added progress, add additional, it did not. Add one vine token to a, a flora. I'll put one here. This predator's along the way. Is not. If there's an active mammal, exhausted. Add progress to it and harm to this feature, both equal to that mammal's presence. Pfft. That's perfect. All right, the bear sloth eats the cherry moss. I had two more vine tokens. So I'm gonna be able to complete trail of vines. Let's see what that says. 1.11. All right, let's see. Have we done any progress on this yet? No, we have not. Entonces, the trail leads deep into the wilderness, far away from any habitation in the valley. Soon it starts to parallel a set of reclaimer tracks. Interesting. Why is the Verdessian following the reclaimers? Why is the Verdessian following the reclaimers? That sounds suspicious. 
Okay. One progress. We'll fill in one little pip. And we'll continue to do Trail of Vines. Huh. Well, I think that was pretty successful. I, hmm. I feel like I need some more cards, so I'm going to go ahead and remember my ranger training. Or attempt to. Nope. <laughs> As usual. Uh, well, we're going to add another vine token. That's good. And that'll be that. I will rest. Draw a card. It's another Ranger badge. All right, come on, Rankobo. Be there. No. That's another dozing bear sloth. And it's getting a little dicey. I've stumbled into a sloth den. I don't have any fatigue, so. Man. All right. Let's deal with that puffer crawler, if we can. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just do it again. Focus down that puffer crawler. And then I'm going to connect with this bear sloth. That's what I'm going to do. This one. Ah, I failed. I did not connect with the bear sloth. <sighs> Crests. Uh, each ranger suffers fatigue. Nope. Uh, if I have four or more fatigue, I do not. Everything's fine. It's fine. Nothing to worry about. That's a lot of, that's a lot of fatigue to get to that puffer crawler. I'm going to try to sketch the spare sloth. I did. Two more sketches on there. I'm not in progress. Add a vine token. Ooh, up to three now. Ah, that's juicy. Uh, if this predator is along the way, it is not. I'm bound to draw a sun one of these days. Let's see. What are my odds of getting a plus one awareness? There's only one in here. I'm going to try, I'm going to bowl for a sun and a one and a plus one. And I'm going to try to avoid this bear sloth. Ha 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 ha, let's go. All right, I did it. I did not get a sun though. Uh, nothing is happening on crests. A 
shuffle. It's a vulture flying in. You know, I really didn't have any concept of how fatiguing a vulture can actually be. You know, when we have those the Eryx in this game, or Irix, I want to pronounce it. That are you know our vulture our, our vulture stand-ins, and uh, I got to tell you, when you're out walking and you have a whole bunch of vultures just kind of like hanging out in the trees above your head, uh, or circling, kind of low and swooping low, or even when you're just sitting here and they're just swooping down through the yard, you, you kind of <laughs> I don't know you feel a little uneasy. Uh, you hear their wings. It has this really kind of eerie sound, the flap of their wings. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely steals focus. You gotta, gotta pay attention. Spend some fatigue. Keeping an eye on those vultures. All right. Shuffled up. Now... Oh man. Do I want to do a straight up two to two on that puffer crawler? Not yet. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to remember remember my ranger training again. Four, one. Two. There we go. Oh hey. Now we're in business. Oh, but I'm all full up. I have to lose something. And a versatile. <sighs> I think I'm going to put the trowel here. Versatile on top. I'll draw the versatile. And then... I will... Oh yeah, first I gotta finish the, what's happening here. Oh hey, yeah, I got a sun. All right, move one vine token, nope. Uh, if there's flora along the way, there is. We're gonna move the bear sloth up here. That worked out great. Sometimes you just have to sit and think for a moment. Everything will work out. All right, gauze blade, puffer crawler time. Suffer one fatigue to give versatile a conflict icon. And I'm gonna go three to two on this puffer crawler and cross my fingers for a plus one. No. All right. Well, got two on it. That's something. Uh, let's see. Let's test not add progress. We're going to add another vine token. Man. I'm pretty sure the Verdessian went this way. And then it's pressure along the way. Suffer one fatigue. Oy. It's looming. I feel it looming over me. All right. And I'm out of energy, so I'm going to rest. Got a familiar ground. Oh, one off. All right. 
Come on, Rancobo. No, it's bees. <laughs> that's not. That's not what I want. It's a cloud hive swarm with one bee, one bee on it. All right. Okay, let's see here. Wow. Well, if I could clear that puffer crawler, which I think I could do. Then uh, I'll get another tick on Trail of Vines, and that'd be awesome. But now there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening here in front of me. All right, first things first. I'm just gonna keep keep an eye on that puffer crawler and exhaust it. The sales sketchbook. Then Oh. We have midday sun happening. <clears throat> then I'm going to let's see. I think I'm gonna get rid of it, so I I'm gonna I'm going to exhaust this bear sloth or attempt to try to avoid it. For three. Minus one. I did it. Mountains. Had one token. I'm gonna feel that bear sloth overhead. And now I'm getting close. I got th three fatigue. Uh, that is that. And then I think I think I'm going to suffer fatigue from this cloud hive swarm. I'm going to reduce that to zero. Well, you know what? Before I do that, before I do that. I'm going to remember my ranger training again. See what I get. <laughs> nothing. I get nothing. Uh, let's see. Each ranger token suffers fatigue equal to the number of vine tokens within reach. That is none. I only have three fatigue, so the bear sloth luckily is not going to injure me. Uh, X is not greater than or equal to my fit aspect. So everything is fine, but it, it is getting a little, a little hairy here. Okay. I didn't get what I wanted, and now I'm, I'm going to risk an injury to slice that puffer crawler. That's, that's scary. This is scary. Okay. So, camel weave cloak. I'm going to avoid the fatigue from the cloud hive swarm. And I'm going to go straight up. Two to two. On that puffer crawler and hope for the best. Let's go. All right. 
It's cleared. Uh, let's see. Let's read. Let's see, we got the next pip on Trail of Vines. You find the Verdessian in a clearing, again standing beside a docile reclaimer with small white flowers growing out of its back. You watch as the reclaimer slinks away, and the Verdessian slowly turns to face you, when suddenly it seems to melt into the earth. You rush into the clearing, but the Verdessian is gone. You do, however, find several dart-like thorns in the grass. They drip with some sort of goo that, when you take a whiff, causes your senses to reel. You suspect it's a powerful soporific. It may be how the Rodessian captures the reclaimers. But what is it doing with them? You'll have to pick up its trail again to learn more. All right. That's two. Two pips on Trail of Vines. Only one more to go. All right. I'm going to suffer fatigue from that sun. So now I have four fatigue. That's not great. There's flora along the way. Nope. Let's see. We've one vine token. No. No. Done. Okay. Well. It's down to two. Nothing better to do. I may as well try to connect. Well, what am I doing? Why would I do that? Why would I do that? I have four fatigue. And I get injured by that bear sloth. I don't want to do that. I got no time to protect, to connect with these bear sloths. Oh, starting to rain. All right, I'm going to rest. If I don't draw Rancobo soon, I may just have to get out of here. <laughs> Run for my life. <laughs> I pin pot secret recipe. All right, buddy. Be there. They told me you were around here. It's Aura Voss, traveler. Let's see. 81. Excuse me, you hear the call from a little ways off and turn to see a woman striding toward you. My name's Aura. I'm looking for my daughter. H have you seen her? About this tall, green tunic, asks a lot of questions. You mentioned that you haven't seen her and she throws up her hands. Uh, she was supposed to meet me at the ranger station hours ago. Can you help me find her? Clear Aura with progress to help her find her. Quizzy. Okay. Let's see. Because we haven't done that yet, have we? No, we have not. We have not done that. That little scamp. <clears throat> Let's see here. Oh, yeah. We also have to add a B. Got two Bs. Got a cloud on here. We have Oravos in play. We're in Kobo somewhere in this deck. Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to give it one, one more, one more round. Well. There's a lot happening here, and it would not be great to draw a crest. But I could sue some fatigue and finish Trail of Vines if I get lucky. All right, I'm going to play Green Thumb. 
I'm going to search the path deck and discard for a flora and put it into play with skill attached. Oh, good. It's friend Kobo's way at the bottom. All right. Okay, next card. I'm going to get a herring, hanging cherry moss. It's going to have its threshold increased by two. And it's going to come into play with a vine token on it. So the cool thing about the cherry moss is I can deal with I can I can use it to help me with this cloud hive swarm, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to just commit one. One fitness to climb up to reach the sweetest of the insect luring fruit to add one harm to this feature. Discard one token from insect in play and soothe one fatigue. I'm going to miss that. Just one to one. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't spend two. Uh, okay, I got a minus two. I'm going to suffer fatigue. Uh, I'm going to move one vine token from a floor to another floor. I cannot. There's floor along the way. There is not. There's an insect in play. Exhaust this feature. Ready an insect. Wow. No exhausted insects. I can't climb up into that tree. <laughs> I couldn't quite reach the good fruit. I only got the gross fruit. All right, I'm going to try that again. I'm living on the edge, too. Like, I'm glad that wasn't a crest. That was, that was a crest. That would have been bad. All right, trying again. Climbing that tree. I did it. Okay, so I'm going to add one harm. I'm going to remove one token from a swarm. I'm going to soothe one fatigue. Uh-oh, I still have four. I'm going to get an injury. Okay. I'm going to get another one here, too. So the this vine token is going to cause a fatigue. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have stuck around. If I have four more fatigue, exhaust this being... Suffer one injury. Move this being within reach. Ouch. I'm injured. What did I lose? Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I get for sticking around one more turn. Injured. Nothing. Active predator, exhaust it. Put two harm on aura. Yikes. <laughs> bear sloth. Coordinated bear sloth assault. Okay. Yikes. <clears throat> well. 
Everything's exhausted now. That's something. I did want to travel pretty far today, but uh, now it's going to be a little more difficult. <sighs> pushed it. I pushed it, and this is what I get. Okay, so I'm going to... Now that it's pretty safe. I know I, know I just got injured, but I'm going to draw this bear sloth. I did it. Two sketches. Got a vine token. Oh, that's all I need. Oh, man. The temptation to stay persists let's get let's get aura out of here at least I'm gonna connect with aura minus one My lands, another fatigue. Move a vine token, nowhere to move it. And that is that. Don't really need any more cards. So I'm going to rest and then then this time, if I don't get Rankobo, I'm I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Ooh, an infusion canteen. Can I have to lose something? Put it in play though. That could come in handy. All right. Let's see it. <laughs> Got him. Got him. All it took was a little persistence. Uh, all right. Let's see. Yeah, I took my... Did I suffer my fatigue from my injury? I have fatigue here. I don't think I did. All right. Runcoba's in play. The man's broad face has been weathered by years of strong wind, and his eyes are surrounded by a forest of wrinkles from a lifetime of squinting into the sun. He pulls his hand out of the pocket of his long coat and thrusts it forward. He speaks with the drawl of the Mesepian sea folk. Rin Kobo is the name, he says, traveling merchant and master of commerce of the Sunray Flotilla at your service. Perhaps you'd like to make a trade? If not, we can simply share the road. I see we're traveling in the same direction. I would love to share the road with you, sir. Okay. Uh, in that case, I think hilariously, I'm just going to rest again. Rest. Double rest. And travel. So I'll draw. Suffer another fatigue. And we'll get out of here. All right. 
Let's, let's look at the map. <clears throat> Crossroads Station to Branch. Here we go. All right, traveling again along the old growth train type. Ooh, spicy. You know, let's pretend that before I traveled I spent one of my energy tokens and put another charge on my cloak. Maybe if I had been, I probably should be more liberal with my use of these camel loop cloak tokens since I have this role. Maybe I wouldn't have suffered an injury back then. Live and learn. All right, there's the old growth. These are going to go away. We'll shuffle in. The branch set. And we'll see what's up. All right. Six. The town of Branch spreads out among the trunks and branches of the giant cedar trees and tough, wrinkled dole woods. The whole village is a maze of platforms and narrow walkways, all created from tree branches encouraged to grow together into dense mats punctuated by spherical homes. Cool. The arranger search the path deck for the next feature and put it in the play. Okay, I can do that. Branch also has a search test on it to search for folks. Oh, there we go. The horn branch. Top deck, the horn branch. 62. Yeah, I, I haven't been to Branch in so long. I feel like, like visiting a, it's like visiting a favorite vacation spot or something. The Horn Branch. The rustling leaves, the rustling of leaves, sounds like the distant roar of an ocean as you walk the elevated pathways of Branch. Steps wrap around the outside of a dull wood, and you find and you follow them up as they lead to a walkway running along one of its largest bows. There you find a hollow dolewood branch fashioned in the shape of a great horn. Unable to resist the temptation, you put your lips to it and blow. A deep, melodious rumble resonates from its mouth, vibrating your bones and causing the birds to erupt from the forest all around you in a raucous, protesting chorus. You imagine that if you blew harder, the sound would be heard at even the far edges of the forest. It's no wonder that the people of Branch use it as a signaling device. All right, the horn branch... When this feature enters play, draw a path card. Cherry Moss. Excellent. All right, Horn Branch has a test on it. It can sound the alarm to add one progress to this card and exhaust a number of beings equal to your effort. Just change that to feature. I'm going to clear it and search the path deck for the next human and put them into play. Ooh. There's an active human with any harm. They fatigue you. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why did you let this happen to us? Uh, okay, we have the cherry moss. All right, now I need to draw for the round. It's another cherry moss.
All right. This is not so bad. This is actually this is actually pretty good. All right, I'm going to start off by playing Familiar Ground. For one fitness, add one harm to a flora, and three to a trail. Branches a trail. There we go. Then, then I'm going to go ahead and play. This is not quite for maximum effect, but. I'm going to go ahead and play High Pin Pop's Secret Recipe. And I'm going to put another harm on this cherry moss and clear it, and one on here. Get a vine token. And then I'm going to soothe two fatigue because I added two harm. Oh man, what a great draw. And inspired by High Pin Pot's secret recipe, I'm going to play Nature's Abundance. I'm going to add harm to this, clear it. Second token. Gain one energy of any type. I'm going to gain fitness. And I'm going to soothe the fatigue. That's my last fatigue. Nice. This is the best round ever. Last round is hard. This round is easy. Okay. Let's finish off Trail of Vines. The trail leads to the top of a butte, and when you peer around a fallen tree, you find the Verdessian standing next to another reclaimer, which has small white flowers growing out of its spine. As you watch, the Verdessian gestures, and the reclaimer slithers away, seemingly at the Verdessian's command. You notice that the ground beneath the Verdessian's feet is solid rock. It may not be able to escape into the ground here as it did before. Complete the Trail of Vines mission. Each ranger soothes two fatigue. No fatigue to soothe, but we'll complete that mission. You emerge from behind the fallen tree. As before, the Bredesian spots you and tries to melt into the ground. But the rocks at its feet prove impenetrable, and instead of vanishing, the Bredesian collapses into a tangled ball of roots, vines, and leaves. You realize this is your chance. You dash forward and carefully scoop the ball into one of your heavy haversacks. The Verdessian squirms inside the sack as a vine pokes out from the top. You sit, panting for a moment, trying to decide what to do. After some thought, you decide that if anyone is going to be able to communicate with the Verdessian, it's spirit speaker Nal. Almost instantly, you feel Nal's presence, like she's been with you this entire time. Then images come into your mind as if emerging from a dark pool, a towering waterfall, a sheer cliff in a vast jungle. You recognize it as the view from Tumbledown. Nal wants you to bring the Verdessian to Tumbledown. Somehow, you know that she'll meet you there. 
Gain the Deeper Motives mission. Record 94.10 five days from now on the campaign tracker. Deeper Motives. Got it. That's exciting. Okay, well, now I got a Verdesian in a sack. It's time, time to keep going. I think, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search, a search test. That's on branch. Big old search for four. Got to tell someone about this Rudessian. Five. Ooh. Let's see what's there. One, two, three, four, five. Celo Grease Apiarist. Well, none of this is too terrible. Celo is not who I was looking for. Because I know where he wants to go. And it's not the direction I was planning on going. Uh, so I think... But we'll see what he has to say. You know, in the spirit of... exploration so I'm gonna go ahead and bury the rest of this and we'll draw a silo and put him into play and see what he's got to say Sixty-four. A strange buzzing fills the air. A flash of yellow and black, and a bumblebee whizzes past. It's quickly followed by three others. You follow them around the base of the tree, only to find a man in a beekeeper's shroud carefully examining a tray of honey. Where are you? I know you're hiding somewhere. He leans closer and laughs. Whoa, why, hello, your highness. The man finally notices you and gives you a theatrical bow. Welcome. Name is Celo Grease. Though I'm sure you knew that already. I suppose you're looking for some honey then? They always are. Best honey in the valley. He winks and swaggers towards you. Well, nothing's for free in this world. You get your hands sticky and help me with this harvest, then maybe I'll give you a taste. Clear Celo with progress to help him with harvesting his honey. It's pretty presumptuous. I got this gauze blade for free, Celo. That's something. The crest did nothing, by the way. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to finish it off with a traverse on the location because it's nice and clear. Spend two plus one. All right, and crests do nothing. Oh boy. Do I want to play this infusion canteen? 
Nope, I think I'm gonna exhaust, spend it, spend that focus, put another token on my cloak. And then I will rest. Getting hungry. You know, I always end up sitting down to these before I eat. And then, as I record, I wish that I'd eaten prior to recording. Hungry. I'm hungry. All right. I'm going to suffer fatigue from my injury. And draw. Ooh. Drew a Cordo's Instinct. That's exciting. Discard a cloud. Draw path guard. It's a cloud hive. Okay, let's see here. Response. After adding one or more harm to this feature, add one B to each Cloud Hive Storm in play. I'm not going to do that. All right, Suns are going to search for Cloud Hive Swarms. There are no active mammals. All right, I th you know, I think. I think it's time to just exhaust that Cloud Hive with. <laughs> my sketchbook. I don't want to deal with. I don't want to deal with that nonsense. All right. <clears throat> We're gonna exhaust it. Then. I'm going to search again, just for three this time. Yes, just for three. Minus one. One. Oh, it's a puffer crawler. Two. Elder Hail. Hmm. Again, not who I was looking for. It could be fun. Let's get the elder out here. Let's see what he has to say. He's the guy who wrote that quote on the back of the box. All right, Chris, don't do anything. Thankfully. All right, where are we here? 66. You hear Elder Tesoro Hale speaking urgently with one of the branch villagers as you approach. Oh, goodness me, she was supposed to be here already. Why do you think she's late? You cough, <clears throat> and he looks up. Oh, ah, hello there. It's good to see you, I'm sure. Clear Elder Hale with progress to ask him if he needs help around Branch. It's, well, clearly. Something's amiss. All right. Well. What do you think? Oh. Could listen to the wisdom of the elders. And I could get a moment card. I could get uh, Eagle Eye. That would be awesome. I don't have very much in the way of 
Well, I could try it. I could try it. Oh, wait. What am I doing? I have Quarter's Instinct. I've never had the opportunity to use this card before. Uh, next round. I will do that to find precisely who I'm looking for. I think... Uh, man, these cards are good. Three to three. I could do a three to three. We'll see. Maybe next. Maybe next round. Maybe next round. All right. Let's connect with CeeLo. Sons, there's an active human with any harm. There's not. All right, nothing's happening there. Then I'm going to traverse this cloud hive. Let's get away from that thing. I want nothing to do with it. I'll put in four. Boop. Five. Oh, so close. So very, very close. Oh, wait. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Perfect day. All right. So if this... Added progress, added an additional progress, it did. I clear the cloud hive. Uh, let's see, nothing happens with the mountains. And that's that. Let's see, how am I doing here? Oh man, I only have. <laughs> man, time flies. I only have six cards left in my deck, so. <laughs> Okay, we'll see if I can do this. We'll see if I can do this. All right, I'm gonna rest. Okay, got another familiar ground. Let's draw a path card. It's a B. One B. One big, big B. Does one B equal a swarm? Yes. <laughs> According to the rules, yes it does. Okay. Uh... It's time for Cordo's Instinct. We're going to search the path deck for a card and place it on the top or bottom of the deck. She was on top already. I went to get Lynn Mira, woodworker. All right, well... That's good to know. Uh, I think I'm going to simply do a search for one.
A one. Zero. All right. I searched. Uh, oh, yep. Never mind. I'm going to take fatigue from the bees, but I will use a charge. Uh, it's Lynn Mira, woodworker. Man, I have almost I have almost every branch card in play right now. Uh, okay, nothing happens with sons. We'll read Lynn Mira's entry. Sixty-five. Still recording. Everything's happening. Okay. 65.2. The sound of metal splitting wood and the scent of fresh sawdust wafts towards you as you approach. A woman heaves and acts up, sweat dripping from her brow. Around her are an assortment of finely carved objects lazily strewn on, a work, on work benches and old stumps. She waves you over as she grabs a tool you've never seen before, a long-handled device lined with a, in a power casing. To what do I owe the pleasure? She clicks a button on the handle, revealing a molten wire humming with energy. Laser cutter. Bark of the dull, bark of the dull wood is woven so tight you need to heat the surface if you're going to cut through it. So she slowly begins hewing away at the bark of a long piece of dull wood. Next to it, you spy an intricately engraved collapsible canoe. The craftsmanship is spectacular. Clear Lynn with progress to ask her about the boat. Let's do that. <clears throat> Let's do that. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to squash some of these some of these bees. Guaranteeing success. Minus one. So I'm gonna get put one harm on it. Get rid of those bees. Mountains, nothing. Very favorable setup right now for challenge effects. All right. Now, I wish I had some more connection icons. You know what? I'm going to take a chance. Play my infusion canteen. And I'm going to make this infusion canteen a spirit infusion canteen. Lemonade. Orange or orange juice. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend one of those. Gain that. Spend to drop this high pin pot secret recipe. Oh, but it's got the two of them. I'm just going to go three. Everything's fine. I'm not in a huge rush. Not in a huge rush. Maybe a little bit of a rush. You know what? We're going to we're gonna draw a plus one. So that would have been wasted anyway. <laughs> Let's go. All right. That's four progress. That is all I needed. Let's go to her entry. Just enchanted by that canoe of yours, madam. Let's see. As Lynn finishes stripping the log, she begins carving deep cuts into the tough bark, slowly running the rope back and forth like a meditation. You ask her about her work, almost in a whisper as to not disturb the ritual. 
Been building these canoes now for almost 15 years. Handy little guys. Design's been passed down for generations. Collapsible, lightweight, and durable. Perfect for you lot. Come with me to High Basin, where there's the right kind of wood to be found. Now, I could carve it for you, but if you want her to take care of you, you need to know every notch and groove. Come with me, and I'll show you how to make one. Well, yeah, let's go. Let's go make a canoe. So, Rangers choose. Agree, remove all progress, uh, and attach helping hand mission to Lynn. Yes, 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 yes. Crests, crests do nothing. Let's see, I have, you can get to the high base and I only have four cards. Ugh. If only I had an extra focus. Do I wait one more round? Take one more fatigue? Take two more fatigue? No, I can't do that. I gotta go. I gotta go. All right. Traveling. I'll have to learn Eagle Eye from someone else at some other time. Say goodbye to CeeLo, say goodbye to Elder Hale. <laughs> it's got some sort of problem that I uh, did not ask him about. Say goodbye to the Horn Branch. And we're gonna travel to the High Basin. Here to here again, old growth. And this is almost certainly going to be my final location of the session. Because I'm about to run out of cards. Thanks to those bear sloths. You know, having encountered sloths in the wild, in the wild, like next to the house of my yoga instructor, just hanging out in like the crotch of a tree, like there's a slope that goes down from her place. It's like uh, up on a hill and there's trees, gorgeous foliage everywhere, a bunch of houses, but directly next to her house just kind of like slopes down toward a stream and there's a bunch of trees and ferns and flowers and stuff and there's a little a sloth just hanging out there like you could get up right close to it just like this sleeping and then went back the next week and there was like a little baby sloth like this big uh in the tree with the mama a little bit farther up so adorable uh not stressful at all wouldn't like i don't know what you'd need to do to make a sloth injure you but i don't think it would do it um which is the must be the bear part of the bear sloth because it's just a sloth if anything it soothes fatigue it's like the gentlest animal ever all right uh high basin Three cards from the valley set. Old growth again. Which, you know, apart from that bear sloth misadventure, not terrible.
All right, path deck's ready to go. Midday sun, oh, that might be bad. Fusion Canteen is up. Uh, let's see. High Basin. Eighteen. Two cards left. I drew a versatile. Mm, okay. Ooh. Lynn Mira, woodworkers in place. She is. Lynn whoops in delight. She sprints down the sh to the shore. And as you follow, you find her poking happily at a massive, partially submerged tree felled near the basin's edge. Take a look at this, she crows. Dullwood, she wraps it, and you hear a solid thunk. You couldn't ask for better conditions. The bark is still perfect, and all this rot just makes it easier to clean out. Search the path deck for a rotting dolewood and put it into play. Okay. That's going to make things difficult. It's an obstacle. It clears with harm. Discard each floor in play. Each ranger suffers fatigue equal to two plus the combined presence of all flora discarded this way. And on mountains, I'm going to add harm to it. If the weather is inclement, it is not. Don't have to worry about that. All right. Lynn lays out several tools and readies her saw. The energy blade flickers and comes to life. She gestures toward her tools. Instead of standing around, why don't you take one of these and help? Finishing this canoe will go a lot faster with multiple hands. Clear Lynn with progress to complete the canoe. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, arrival setup. Search the path deck for the next flora and put it into play. Ooh, Eclipse is here. Oops. Hanging cherry moss. It's a very full board. So we're going to try to Clear Lynn. Ooh, High Basin is a trail. That's good. All right. This is going to be easy. No problem. No problem. All right. Let me draw. It's a Cloud Hive. Let's see. We can also swim in the crystal clear waters of the high lake to soothe fatigue equal to our effort. That's nice. Five. Five progress to clear, to, to travel from the high basin. Uh, but there's a trail, and I have familiar ground in my hand, so that is good. All right, first things first. Exhaust that cloud hive. Don't want anything to do with that. Then... Let's connect with Lynn. We'll throw in a versatile and one energy from my infusion canteen. Four. Five. Minus one. All right. 
four. That will clear her. Okay, let's see. Clear if you're at the high basin, 65.3. With a gentle nudge, you lock the last panel of dullwood into place. Take a breath and step back. Lynn gives you a satisfied nod. You look up and realize you've lost track of time. The carving process was so engrossing it felt as if time slipped away like a silent stream flowing on toward dusk. She eyes your work admiringly. I must say, I'm impressed. It took me more than a few goes before I managed to make something like this. You thank her for the compliment and her help, and she clasps you on your shoulder. Of course! Should be rapids ready. Try collapsing it for storage. And if you'd like, there's a creek about a mile east of here where you can give her a test run. Gain the Dolwood Canoe Reward Card, discard Lynn, and return Helping Hand to the collection. Write Carved a Dolwood Canoe on the campaign tracker canoe acquired very exciting very very exciting and she's right because there's a river path right here from the high basin we could take if we wanted if, I, if we really wanted to straight down the biological outpost we could complete the mission since i'm not going to be able to go on my little journey to the terror i'm willing to bet Whoever takes over in the next session will do just that. That's my guess. But who knows? Anything is still possible. All right. Now I just need to get out of here. <laughs> uh, so we've got that rotting dull wood there. Which I suppose I could have exhausted it with my with my sketchbook, which I can suppose I could still do. I have one more round, maybe, if I don't get horribly unlucky. All right, we'll start by playing familiar ground. Gonna add one harm to this floor. And three to a trail. High Basin is a trail. Then, <clears throat> I'm gonna sketch that, that, that Ryan Dolwood, I'm gonna sketch it. That's a cool looking fallen log. I did it. Put two on there. Crests do nothing. Getting a lot of crests. What I don't want is a sun. What do you think? Do I try to soothe some fatigue here? So I can get potentially I'm just going to wait. I'm going to rest. And then it's it's either going to happen next round or it's not. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. I'll spend a token. I'll put another. Well, it doesn't matter. It, actually, it, it doesn't matter at all. So I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm not going to add anything to a tech. No need. Well, you know what? Why not? Who knows? Who knows what could happen? I don't. I'll put another one on the cloak and spend one of those energy and exhaust my roll. Okay. Resting. Refilling everything. Gonna suffer a fatigue. Gonna draw a card. My deck is gone. Ooh, I got spider pad gloves. Mm hmm. Okay. I don't know if that actually helps me right now. Perhaps for the icon, if I can get a progress on there. 
All right, what we get? Bees. It's a bee. All right, this is not bad. I think we can do it. When I say we, I mean me. Okay. Exhaust the old sketchbook. Exhaust the dull wood. And then I'm going to traverse. For three, I'm going to spend a token off my cloak for the bees. Another one for the cloud hive to ignore all that fatigue. And then we're going three to one. I need two. So minus one, no suns. We're in business. The odds of it being suns, pretty good. <laughs> all right. Let's go, all right. Three, got crests. Nothing happens with crests again. Man, look at all these, look at all these crests. Crests and mountains today. All right, I did it. So we're going to rest and travel. And you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make, <laughs> I'm going to make them go to the Terravor. So, Cause I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the furrow and we'll camp there. So furrow along the lakeshore and then they will have no choice <laughs> but to go to the Terravor. I guess they could go to the fractured wall. Uh, but they go the long way around to the biological outpost if that's what they want to do. All right, awesome. That worked out great. Got the canoe. Had a chance to get eagle eye, which is something I want to do, but didn't didn't manage to do that. And that's unfortunate. But uh, I'm sure an opportunity will will come up will come up again. Um, all right, great. Well, that was super successful. That feels awesome. Also finished Trail of Vines. Uh, we'll be on the next, I think the, the next stage of invasion stage one, uh, next time around. Um, so the valley might be a little bit more dangerous, but I think that's it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, it, it didn't end up really raining that much. I was kind of hoping we'd get a big downpour during my recording, but, but there no, no such luck. There, I do see some pretty dark clouds on the horizon, so I'm, I'm sure it'll probably start as soon as we're done. <laughs> as soon as I'm done recording, it'll just start pouring. Um, which is probably for the best. I probably shouldn't get this stuff wet. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, it's really fun doing these. I'm looking forward to doing, other, doing another one. I don't know who's going to join next. I really want to get Anders back uh, to do the play playcast with somebody. Uh, hopefully we can entice him back onto the program. Uh, if not, perhaps Fisher or Maxine or Evan or Corey, any combination thereof. Uh, but until then, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye now.